A lot of cancer happened here. This house had cancer. My two childhood friends also had children with cancerous brain tumors. Yes. Hope Gross and Joanne Stanton say this is the toxic legacy of their childhoods, growing up near two naval air bases in Pennsylvania. Yeah. This is it. I mean, this is where we stood as children. Watching the Navy train to put out aircraft fires, the firefighting foam running into creeks, ponds, and soil. I don't think we were worried about anything. Until 2014, when EPA tests revealed chemicals known as PFAS used in the foam had seeped into the area's drinking water. One well in Warminster had among the highest levels of PFAS in the country, 1,400 parts per trillion, 20 times more than the EPA suggests is safe over a lifetime for chemicals the government acknowledges may be linked to cancer and other health issues. We were all in the same toxic cesspool. We all drank the same water. And that, they suspect, may explain Hope's stage 4 melanoma at 25 and the brain tumor found in Joanne's six-year-old son. Doctors came in and started asking my husband and I very pointed questions. Where do you live? Where did you grow up? Did you or your husband ever use or work with chemicals or pesticides? What's going through your mind? I immediately started looking into environmental causes, immediately. The military firefighters in the foam were magnets for children, here spraying kids at a fundraiser in 1982. Across the country, the Defense Department found potential PFAS contamination at 401 bases. As far back as 1995, reports suggested a risk to drinking water. The Defense Department tells NBC News no one is drinking water above the EPA's lifetime health advisory level, where DOD is the known source, and that the Navy is funding the treatment of public water supply wells. The DOD also says it no longer uses firefighting foam containing PFAS for land-based testing and training, only emergencies. I think we need to step back and ask the question, why are we making chemicals that will never go away? PFAS are everywhere, says Linda Birnbaum, the recently retired head of the National Toxicology Program. They're used to repel water, grease and oil in all sorts of things, from carpets to nonstick cookware to clothing. Though two of the most studied, PFOA and PFOS, have been phased out in the U.S., Birnbaum worries about the other 5,000 PFAS chemicals that may be just as dangerous. There are regulations for many, many chemicals in our drinking water, things like arsenic, lead. Are there any regulations regarding PFAS? In our drinking water, currently, it is not regulated. Here in Hope and Joanne's old neighborhoods, the water authorities use filtration systems to remove PFAS. But the women want federal regulation, something the EPA has promised to propose by the end of the year. And the CDC will spend $1 million to study the health impacts here. We hope that someday you can turn on the kitchen faucet and you can hand a child a drink of water and know that it's clean and safe. But we're far away from that right now. To trust again one of life's most essential elements. Ann Thompson, NBC News, Warminster, Pennsylvania. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.